As a bank that focuses on business, we work with business leaders all day, every day. We have a front row seat to what's working and what has potential. The First Business Bank podcast is dedicated to sharing insights to help you work better, smarter, and faster to achieve your goals. Let's get into the show. Welcome to the First Business Bank podcast. I am Jeremiah Jansen, Vice President of Business Banking here at First Business Bank. I have the honor to visit with Marty Oaks today as your host. Uh, Marty is a successful business executive and passionate leader that continues to push the industry farther. Um, even though he says in, he's in retirement, uh, I'm not so sure about that, but uh, his accomplishments include graduating from UW Siemens Point with a degree in business, economics, and public administration, uh, 40 years of experience in the paper and printing industries, founding AM Mailing, uh, where he was a Wisconsin State Business Award winner, serving on many boards throughout his career, including being a current member of First Business Bank's Northeast Advisory Board and also the Hope Center, and most recently founding the Green Bay Innovation Group, also known as GBIG, almost five years ago. GBIG is a business-to-business consortium of enterprises working in the paper, packaging, printing, converting, and related industries. Uh, This is where we like to spend the majority of our time today discussing Marty's passion for the paper industry and how GBIG is bringing paper-related companies, uh, in particular Wisconsin-based companies, together and positively impacting our communities. Um, you know, so looking back, uh, myself growing up in De Pere and graduating from St. Norbert College, I have always been surrounded and influenced by the paper industry. Um, both of my parents and most of my extended family worked in the mills. You, you know, Marty, uh, from our conversations, uh, I know that you also grew up surrounded by the paper industry as well. You know, give us the time, uh, give us a little bit. Uh, tell us about your background and how you got started in the industry. Well, like yourself, uh, many of us grew up in the paper industry, as you know, from Fox Valley to all the way down, uh, multiple, multiple paper mills. But I grew up in uh, Peshtigo, Wisconsin with uh, Badger Paper Mills. All my family members worked in the mills. Around Peshtigo, we had uh, multiple mills in Marinette, multiple mills in Menominee. We had multiple mills up in Escanaba. We had mills in uh, Niagara, O'Connell Falls. So when we grew up up there, paper was a central force, economic driving force for the community. Um, I don't know what to say other than the size and magnitude was just a huge. Uh, what drove me to go to Stevens Point was basically forestry conservation ended up in business. Um, I started my career with Consolidated Papers. Consolidated Papers was the largest coated paper mill in the world at the time. Uh, they were state of the art in all aspects. After that, I went to work for a carpenter paper company. We were basically a wholesale paper outlet. We worked with a wide variety of paper mills. And I really extended my knowledge in all ends of paper from conventional paper and offset and such uh, to specialty grades. Again, we utilized a lot of paper mills in Wisconsin. Uh, I moved into the printing industry, started with a small printer. I just kept growing in the bigger, bigger printers uh, as I progressed. I ended up uh, setting up a manufacturer rep organization that I worked with a number of large printers. Uh, and then after that, I started AM Mailing, which is basically a both printing and mailing shop. We were doing work across the United States with major, major accounts. Yeah, very, very impressive, Marty. Um, so here at First Business Bank, uh, we have a passion not just for banking, but for uh, business as well. Uh, we are a business focused bank that really tries to understand targeted industries. Um, I personally lead our manufacturing industry practice group with my area of focus on companies tied to the five P's. And, um, you know, regarding the paper industry, I believe it was about four years ago that we met originally where I was attending a paper related seminar with several clients on the state of paper in Wisconsin. Uh, to me, the event was a, a big eye opener on how impactful and important the paper industry is to Wisconsin. Uh, you know, looking back for yourself, you know, what was your inspiration in starting the Green Bay Innovation Group? Well, again, I'm originally from up here. I was fortunate to live in Chicago, Denver, and Madison, and work with uh, companies, you know, across, across the United States. I was a member of a wide variety of groups, industry groups, uh, that gave me a tremendous opportunity to meet, greet, and understand. Uh, I moved back to church 
Uh, this may be uh, is kind of a little laughing matter. Uh, I was a greeter at church, and it seemed like every other person I met worked in the paper industry. Before long, all of a sudden, I found out four or five of my friends, again, were in the paper industry. We would kind of kid to say, we all want to go to work at Fort Howard, uh, which paid real well. But the point is this, as I did some research, I looked, there was not a business-to-business association specifically dedicated to printing paper, packaging, converting plastics, and pulp. Uh, we had some very strong other organizations that, uh, for instance, like the Wisconsin Paper Council, we had the New North, okay, we had New Manufacturing Alliance, tremendous groups. Um, but we simply focused on one sector, and obviously that sector, you know, I had a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge, and again, as I looked at it, I kept finding more and more companies that basically started their industry because of paper. Uh, I kid people, or I heard the comment that uh, paper basically built Lambeau Field. Is that true? Well, it probably had a big impact. So the economic impact of the industry is huge. Uh, every day, uh, I find more and more companies that are involved in these industries. So at that point, we sat down, put together information of what we're doing, this, that, set a program, moved it forth, and... Uh, you can see all that information on the website, but again, it was basically a business-to-business group. Uh, I was a little bit tired of seeing out-of-state organizations that uh, were in some of these groups, but they didn't focus on Wisconsin. So the biggest impact that we're going to have is bringing businesses together, let the state legislators, let the state know of the big size and imp- impact that these industries are in Wisconsin. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, as I as I dive into this and I look more and more and grow my knowledge, it's it's amazing how much industry clusters we have tied to these organizations. And uh, when we first met, you know, several years ago to the GBA Printer Showcase just a few weeks ago, uh, we have seen a lot of growth within the organization. You know, what, what do you attribute that growth to? Well, again, our focus is Wisconsin, number one. Number two, we're looking at specific industries. Number three... We have no fees for memberships, okay? We are totally sponsorship-driven. Uh, half of all our revenue from sponsorships go back to the food pantry, homeless shelters, and, and education. So our focus is basically to support Wisconsin, number one. Number two, again, I refer to church. So many of us have been in the industry, and so many of us know one another. So many of us, like yourself, have multiple generation in this industries. I've had national uh, associations say, why, how do you bring all these people together? And I say, well, basically, uh, it's three, four, five generations of families. You know, we all know one another, know somebody, a dad, grandpa, whatever. So again, it's one big family in the industry, and that's the key to pull us together. Yeah, you talk about one big family. Um, it really does seem like that, uh, meeting with individuals throughout the group. Uh, and also in the industry, you know, uh, every organization has goals. You know, what, what are the goals for GBIG? Well, the biggest goal is bringing all our industry leaders together. I think, um, again, I find that there's companies down the street from one company. They don't even know one another. So as we bring them together, many companies find out they have customers in their own backyard, number one. Number two, we look at some of the technologies and we all know we need to basically automate and in one case i met a couple two three companies and we could take all their equipment put it in line and quite frankly um uh, reduce labor force from 12 to 4 uh and and today it is going to be automation we're going to compete in the world we need to basically bring all our great manufacturers together to look at equipment and work together to build uh, new technologies and new innovations for the industry. We're definitely seeing automation being a big part of many manufacturers that we're working with. And um, it always seems like, you know, once they kind of jump on that train, uh, they continue to push that forward. One thing that would just amaze so many people here, okay? A case in point, um, Amazon, some of their biggest suppliers are here. McDonald's, some of their biggest suppliers. You know, we're so integrated with our technologies. Now, 
Many of these companies can't say anything, okay, due to confidentiality. But if you look at the sheer size and magnitude and production of these facilities, okay, you can almost walk anywhere, east side, west side, uh, south side of De Pere, huge factories. You go into Appleton, you go into Needham, Manasha. You can't go in any direction that you won't find multitude of companies in the printing paper packaging converting. Uh, I did something called the De Pere Walk, and I'm going to continue with that, but there were like 25 companies, okay, in that area, from Green Bay Packaging uh, to R. Donnelly, okay, to Bellmark. Uh, you're talking huge companies that are kind of under the radar. And so, again, as I did more and more study, and I just recently took a trip up to Little Phillips, Wisconsin, 1,800 people with three huge plants up there. Um, again, there's many little towns in Wisconsin you can go to, and they got one big plant, and they basically are the chief e economic drive for the city. Yeah, yeah, you bring up an excellent point there, Marty. You know, being in Wisconsin, traveling through the state, there are great uh, companies throughout throughout the state that are really tied to these clusters. And um, it's amazing when you hear the stories and also, you know, what they're building within their walls. Uh, as you point out, you know, they can't go out and market themselves and show how big they are and who they're working with. But, uh, you know, once you're inside there, it is amazing what they're doing. Well, what we could do with GBEG is bring the information across the country and in the nation. We produce a biweekly newsletter, I should call publication, okay? We bring in stories across the state to show people our capabilities, our size, and magnitude. Um, we have a meeting coming up uh, that, quite frankly, is with Amcor. And when you think of Amcor with five facilities in Wisconsin, okay, at a $14 billion company, that makes a statement. You look at basically the Green Bay packaging, uh, you look at uh, Paper Converting Machinery Corp. These are mega companies uh, in billions of dollars in sales. And we're all in Wisconsin, and many of the companies are within half an hour, 45 minutes of one another. So we find if we can bring all the leaders together uh, and, and be a very strong advocate of our industries, we all will benefit. Hey, Marty, uh, you brought up the website for GBIG. Um, it's GreenBayInnovationGroup.com. Um, it has a wealth of resources and obviously you have the weekly 5P newsletter. Uh, what resources can people find on there? Virtually everything. Um, our goal here is to build a very comprehensive website for resources. We've got over 120 sponsors. You can click on the sponsorship website. We drive people to our website. Uh, recently, I did some Google searches. Uh, GBIG basically comes up in the top four continually. Our goal is is to bring people to that website to drive them to uh, a number of companies in Wisconsin. Um, so it's a great tool. In addition, we're building some very select targeted uh, email databases when people are looking for something, okay? We can immediately send us the information, click, and it goes to a, the right sources. So we have that. In addition, ver we're very educational. If you look at all our topics, our subjects, it really brings a wide variety of the industry to many people who didn't understand another part of the industry. So again, we're linking people together to have a better understanding of the size magnitude of the industry in Wisconsin. Yeah, uh, you know, you're talking about education. I know the organization puts on events, tours, open houses, and, uh, and I really enjoy taking part in them. Um, it's been an opportunity for me personally to learn from industry leaders and expand my knowledge of the news and events that are really impacting uh, the clients I work with. And also, it's just great to see the building, or, you know, the attendees in the building relationships with one another and really connecting. Um, and uh, it's amazing what these companies are creating within their walls. Um, you know, when you think about these events, what are your, your, what are your biggest takeaways and what is, what is the feedback that you are hearing from individuals that are attending them? Well, first of all, um, many people say, John, I haven't seen you in 10 years. Okay. Jim, where have you been? We find these events bring many people together who may not have seen one another, whatever. Uh, again, I go back to interlinking families, but we bring a lot of one-on-one -on -one warm relationships uh, we bring, quite frankly, sometimes some people feel they're competitors. 
Well, technically, they aren't. They're in different markets. They produce different products. They use different substrates. Uh, they have different type of converting equipment. Um, not long ago, one person brought in a project to us, and the size and magnitude would have taken three flexible printers to do it. Okay, fortunately, I had the reserves to go out and talk to these people, and you know, this gives us some great opportunities. Again, even if somebody is a competitor, a large project comes in. Let's work with two different people, but let's keep the jobs in Wisconsin, utilizing all Wisconsin resources. Yeah, you've told me many stories about how companies are coming together, working together. And, um, you know, one of the things that uh, even looking at your website and attending these events is, has really shown me how large of an impact that women have within the five P's, converting and supporting industries. Uh, I know within GBIG, you have the women in five P's industry group. Uh, tell us more about this part of GBIG. Well, Casey Dietrich uh, heads it up and Ashley uh, basically head up the program. Um, realistically, we've got to understand the impact of uh, females in, in our industries. We're seeing more and more women engineers. We're seeing more and more women running companies. Uh, a case in point, ASI, uh, Angela Krieger, uh, taken over as president of the company that her father basically was involved with. Uh, they're doing work in Poland, in Germany, and all across the United States, okay? So we're seeing different companies, okay, that the women now are becoming leaders, vice president of sales and marketing, um, and they're doing an incredible job. Uh, the Women in 5P basically is an offshoot that we support uh, both financially and uh, with GBIG. We want to see them grow and build, and they have... Uh, some great programs and get togethers again is building relationships yeah it's uh there's definitely an impact and a very important part there for uh, for women in these industries and it's great to see and it's great to see gbig's involvement along with that so you know looking forward uh what, what does gbig hope to accomplish in the future and uh who are the advocates well what we'd like to do is is obviously i reiterate bringing a lot of people together making people more aware of our industries to also get people, younger people, into the trades and the industry. We recognize the, the declining uh, of the baby boomers. We know that we've got to bring people in, make people understand that this is not just an old manufacturing plant. Um, I mentioned I get into some of these plants. I mean, I look, it looks like they're uh, from Mars, the state-of-the-art robotics, the state-of-the-art equipment. Uh, the amount of places that I go to, four or 500,000 square foot manufacturing. And you probably only see 20, 30 people in the whole plant. So the impressiveness of some of these companies, uh, companies like PCMC, uh, what they're making for equipment is so impressive. But again, robotics is again, um, we need the kids and people to step into a higher level of of equipment and manufacturing. Yeah, Mario. Hey, that's uh, that's just great to hear that you're reaching out to high schools, trade schools, and universities. Um, I'm on the board of ATEC, which is a charter school within the Appleton School District that focuses on manufacturing careers. Uh, we're going to have a roundtable discussion with local businesses in the coming weeks. Um, if if you are a, a business owner or have interest in helping uh, your local area school. I would ask you to get involved. It's a, it's a great experience for me so far. You know, also, you know, I guess for me, maybe, maybe one of our, our last questions here is, you know, if our, if our listeners are looking to, to become more involved, you know, what, what advice would you give them? Well, first of all, we're free membership. Okay. And we're supported by sponsorships. We ask companies that if you want to support us, uh, we've got very reasonable sponsorships, no membership. Many of our events are free. Okay. Our goal at the end of the year is basically to donate one half of all our revenue from sponsorships back into the community and in scholarships. So realistically, the best thing to support be a sponsor, number one. Number two, the events that we have are very reasonable. I mean, we're going into Amcor, we're going into Playcon, we're going into some companies, quite frankly, as an individual, you'd never get in there, okay? But as we bring a whole group together, okay, this gives us the ability because because of what we're doing, these companies see that. And so we can get people in to open up, to see what they're doing. And uh, 
quite frankly, uh, we've got some extremely impressive uh, uh, tours. Yeah, I know uh, you put on that event a couple months ago, I think early spring, where we were able to go through, I think, you know, four or five businesses, local businesses. And, uh, you know, the discussion was great. Um, the conversations were fabulous. And um, it's just great seeing that group of individuals working together. Well, and we also promote these companies. Uh, many of these companies after an event, okay? I'll use this case in point. We went to Charter Next uh, Generation. They're based out of Milton. They have got five plants in Wisconsin, 13 plants worldwide, over a billion dollars in sales. We brought in a number of people in the flexible packaging. We had a guest speaker, uh, George Huber, who was one of the premier uh, guys in the world regarding plastics. We teamed those two together because we're looking at developing, okay, a new film that will be biodegradable, uh, particularly focused on the one-time usage. But again, we brought four or five people, and they all want to work together, uh, some of the people who use film, some of the people convert film, and integrate basically education and technology with industry to come up with new products. Yeah, no, that's excellent to hear. Um, and also, you know, just talking with uh, attendees and also people that are heavily involved, uh, it's it's amazing the how you've been opening up doors with events or even just making personal connections. I mean, I think you're the uh, maybe the number one connector and number one network in the whole industry. It's uh, it's amazing to watch. Um, any last any last thoughts for the audience or anything that we have left out so far? Well, and and, and you made that comment and used the comment to me about a cheerleader. Yeah. Um, if you look at the state of Wisconsin, okay, when you look at the sheer size, okay? We do not have a connector, okay? And you're right, uh, my background is very uh, broad. So I understand machinery, I understand technology, converting, printing, paper, packaging. So what I'm doing is gonna bring together groups, particularly focused on the, the paper industry to how can we regenerate, what can we do in the paper industry? Because the key today is we have lost so much paper capacity, okay, in Wisconsin, okay. My belief is this, that we need to relook, okay. Uh, we've lost a lot of the printing paper capacity, as I call uncoated uh, and uh, coated groundwood uh, uh, free sheets. Well, we don't really have much capacity anymore. We've seen mills basically shut down, move towards specialty packaging. And I can understand the move in that direction, but we still have a huge need of coated, uncoated paper for the commercial printing, for the catalog, for the direct mail. Uh, so we need to really look at this and say, what can we do as a state, as a group, to rebuild some of the paper machines and or put in new machines? Granted, people will say, well, we can't find labor. Well, I hear that all over the place. Granted, you know, paper machine is expensive. Well, there's paper machines going all across the world, okay? Um, so environmental yes environmental is an issue but we can over overcome that so realistically can we work with the state of wisconsin work with people like the paper council work with the other organizations say look can we come back and rebuild some of the paper industry our infrastructure for building and supporting uh paper machines is unheard of there's nobody in the nation okay when you look at some of these companies whether it's tissue towel whatever uh PCMC, look at what they're doing. Look at Infinity Machine, very innovative company selling equipment across the United States, and they, we can't sell in our own backyard. But yet, we need more capacity. And unfortunately, um, again, there's different opinions, but the majority of mills that have shut down are over 100 years old. And we seem to think that we could just keep rebuilding, rebuilding. At some point, as a nation, okay, for our own security, and protection. Uh, we won't get paper from China. We won't get paper from Europe. So there's a big void in those markets. So how do we come forth as a state of Wisconsin to say, let's fill some of those capacities? What is it going to take? Can we put together a statewide business plan? Again, pull in all businesses, not just the paper industry. Pull in the printing industry to support more paper production, the packaging, converting. So my point is this is, and just recently an announcement came up that uh, Pixel shut down, they basically uh, released liner papers. 
Well, they produce one third in the country. That impact will be huge, okay, on the label industry in Wisconsin, and we're probably number one or number two in the, in the nation. But here's suppliers that produce these products, and one third of your paper is gone. Yeah, it's it's amazing the impact that Wisconsin has on the overall paper industry. Uh, you know, in the last couple of years, I've heard us referenced as the converting corridor. Um, you know, how how big? And I, we should have got this maybe a little bit sooner in the in the in the podcast here. But overall, how how big is the industry, and how much does it mean to Wisconsin? Well, the industry is billion upon billions upon billions. Um, obviously. I think I looked through GBIG. We're targeting well over 70, 80 billion, but that does include GP. That does include some of the big players, Parker and Gamble, uh, people like that. So if you include them, okay, it's a huge, huge industry. But here's what people don't see. You don't see the amount of manufacturers, manufacturing capabilities supporting this, okay, these industries. The people, unfortunately, uh, we don't recognize it, them being innovative. We're very innovative in new product, new product designs. Uh, you know, again, I keep referring to PCMC. If you ever go through their plant and all the unique things that they do, I mean, it, it's just unbelievable. Again, it's a $3 billion company. So there's so many companies that are hidden behind. Corver, for instance, uh, it's got a great facility in Green Bay, and they're a billions of dollar company based out of uh, Italy. So. Many international companies have presence through our valley, too. Um, so, again, when you start taking a look, you say, well, Manasha Corp, Great Northern Nacus, Great Northern uh, uh, Corp, the size of Megatune of corrugated. Case in point, we probably have six major corrugated manufacturers with plants in Wisconsin. And whether it's international paper, whether it's PCA, all these companies, you know, again, we have our local favorite in the Green Bay packaging. But understand, here's six major international, national, international companies with plants or corrugated just in Wisconsin alone. Yeah, you make a, a good point there. It seems like a lot of uh, large corporations are reinvesting in in Wisconsin. Uh, why, why do you see that, Marty? Why, why are they reinvesting back in, in the mills and the paper industry back here in Wisconsin? Well... The truth is this, they aren't as much as you think, okay? When I say they aren't as much as you think, the first paper mill uh, put up, obviously, recently is Green Bay Packaging. But 40, it's 40 years since we had a new paper machine. 40 years, okay? So realistically, we aren't investing. What we're doing is putting on Band-Aids, okay? We, as a state, as businesses, need to go to see PC, uh, PCA. We need to go to International. We need to go to Manasha Corps, who's a local uh, company, too. How do we approach them and say, look, can we help you put in some new machines? What can we do to have you reinvest back here? Recently, um, Orbit uh, Division of uh, Manasha Corp put up a multi, multi-million dollar plant in Ohio, okay? Um, so the point is this, is um, we've lost a lot of our local leadership and ownership in Wisconsin to outside uh, out of the state. But what we need to do is reinforce our local people to say, look, what do we do? How can we reinvest in the paper industry? And again, um, we need to do it at, from the 5P point of view. I recently talked to a former WEDC uh, executive, vice president, and he said, Marty, you're on the right track. What you're doing is not just focusing on paper or just printing okay, uh, or just packaging. What you're doing is bringing together the whole gamut because all of us are dependent on paper. We lose paper, the rest of the industry is going to topple, and we're just going to become more dependent on, a, you know, or uh, dependent on other factories outside of Wisconsin and or China or elsewhere around the world. So we have to make a major, we have to put together a major group, business group to support paper. Yeah, you mentioned a, a number of organizations, including GBIG, that are really trying to push this forward and bring it to the forefront. Um, it seems like I've been seeing more news, and I think uh, you're a big part of that as far as getting the, the local news to report more on the industry as well. Um, can you share anything on that? Well, ironically, 
U.S. News World Report in Wisconsin, okay, has approached me. We are going to put together a group of meetings to meet with a wide variety of people in the industry. They want to cover Wisconsin. They have one person, okay, that's basically going to cover the paper industry. I want to introduce her to a variety of people in the paper industry. In addition, I want to introduce her to converting, to the printing, okay, to the packaging, because it's all intertwined. So um, I'm very, very excited and pleased that U.S. News uh, comes to us and wants to interview us. Yeah, Marty, uh, that's all exciting. Oh, you know, it's good to see the industry being pushed forward. And, uh, you know, overall, you know, I just really want to thank you for joining us today, uh, for being our guest. And, you know, thank you for all that you do. Uh, I want to thank our audience for listening. I hope that you found it valuable. I know that I did. Uh, always, we enjoy seeing your passion for the industry. It's at the top. And I personally believe that, uh, again, that you are its biggest advocate. Um, you know, one plug that I would put in for uh, First Business Bank is that we are heavily involved with a number of manufacturing events and associations uh, within Wisconsin. One of the largest is actually the Manufacturing First Expo and Conference. Uh, we're the original founders of this event, and it's a great conference for companies in the five P's. A large number of these attendees are associated with the five P's in some way. And uh, hopefully you've been able to attend this event or will be able to do so in the future. Um, again, as a bank that is focused on business, it is important for us to be involved in these events and these associations um, that are of interest to our clients and uh, to find the ways that we can assist businesses in growing their own business. So uh, I would encourage our audience that if you're looking for more information, again, go to greenbayinnovationgroup.com um, or we also have a lot of content like this uh, and we have a lot of different resources on our website as well at firstbusiness.bank. That's firstbusiness.bank. Um, I invite you to experience the advantage at First Business Bank. If there's anything that uh, we can help you with, please reach out. If you want more content like what you just heard delivered straight to your inbox, go to firstbusinessbankpodcast.com. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the First Business Bank Podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, please leave a quick rating of the show. Thanks so much for listening. First Business Bank, member FDIC.